Hello, everybody. Welcome to this uh, webinar that is brought to you by uh, Kenanga Investment Bank. So today we are very excited to be hosting the management of Para Transit Berhad to be on our Kentrit webinar tonight. So today we are going to have this live chat with Para Transit, which we will delve deeper into their Q4 results review and also the futures outlook. So today we are very excited because we have the executive director, which, uh, who is Dato Chong, and also the chief financial officer, Jennifer Chin from Para Transit Berhad to share with us about their company, their business performance, as well as their futures prospect. Okay. So we are setting the room right now and let's wait a bit more for more people to join in. And uh, we also live stream this to YouTube. So for our friends here tuning in from YouTube, so good evening to all of you here. All right, so thanks for joining this session. I'm sure that you all are doing okay. If you are doing okay uh, right now and you're all ready for this session, please type yes in the chat box so we know that you're you are ready, you're excited to, to these sessions. All right, fantastic. We have so many people ready for this. Okay, this is a session that you are not going to miss out because you're going to gain so much insights into the operation of Parat Chansey Berhad and also their business performance. So uh, before we begin, just want to go through a disclaimer. So whatever we share on this uh, webinar is only for educational purpose. So in no way that I give any uh, buy or sell signal to any companies I mentioned. So if you decide to invest in Parat Transit, you do it at your own risk. Okay. So yeah, without further ado, let me uh, hand over the session to Jennifer from Parat Transit, who is the Chief Financial Officer of P-Trans. Jennifer, over to you. Okay, thank you very much, John. A very good evening to everyone. Okay, so um, first of all, I'd like to uh, thank Kentrick for organizing this uh, briefing today. So I will share our corporate presentation now. Okay, so today, basically, we are going to uh, cover three different areas. The first one is about the business overview. Uh, it's basically for uh, newcomers. Uh, Okay, so secondly is about the quarterly results and thirdly is about our future plans. Okay, let's start off with the business view. Okay, so our company has three different core activities. The first one and the main one, uh, all the revenues and earnings come from, is from our express bus terminal. So currently we have to uh, own and operate express bus terminal. And then subsequently we also have bus uh, services. Okay, our bus services basically is to support our terminal operations because it's helped to bring crops to our terminal. Okay, the third core activities is actually our petrol stations. So petrol station is another support activity to our bus operation because our buses can pump petrol at our own petrol stations. Uh, but the petrol station is also open to public. Okay, I will drill into each and every one of the uh, activities in more detail. Okay, the first one is about the terminal operations. Okay, so just now I mentioned that we have two uh, gasseted express bus terminal. Okay, so one is called Terminal Maru Raya, located uh, in Jelapang, Maru Raya, Hera. Another one is called Kampa Putra Centre. Okay, so it's located in a second tier city of uh, Hera, in Kampa itself. Okay, you can see that majority of our revenue contributions basically come from the terminal operations, which consists of 60% in 2020. Okay. Our operating profit uh, out of the whole group also consists of 94%. So majority of the earnings is actually coming from these terminal operations. So we are not only providing uh, basic facilities just for uh, a terminal of four passengers, but we have add on a more concept in our terminal. Okay, we drill in more detail each uh, of our terminals. So the first one is Terminal Maruaya. Okay, we have shared two pictures here. One is um, 
the, the previous uh, temporary terminal in Meta and Crossing in Terra itself. But once our terminal Mariah have completed the constructions, so all the express bus operator is gasseted and regulated to move to our terminal. So it's regulated to pick up and drop off the passengers in our terminal. Okay, so all the express bus that pass by before have to pick up and drop off the passengers in our terminal. Okay, and then recently Terminal Maruaya has been rated as grade A. Okay, so out of Malaysia, there is only a few terminals with grade A status. Lah. So Terminal Maruaya is one of it. So how to obtain grade A? Okay, first of all, you have to have a centralized ticketing system, which means in the old days, the express bus operators will operate each and individual ticketing booth and then they could compete among each other so it will be very messy in the terminal so there will be shocking for customers and so forth but with the implementations of centralized ticketing system all these individual ticketing booths will be demolished okay so so the express bus operator no longer need to rent a space with us but they only need to register and upload the data in the system so passengers can now purchase the ticket either online, self-service queues, or through our ticketing counters. So we will help to manage. Of course, we will charge a commission per ticket sales and per bus entrance. Okay. So um, once passengers uh, purchase the ticket, uh, they can actually choose which are the uh, uh, favorites uh, express bus operators based on the frequency, pricing, um, uh, the branding, and so forth. So they can pick from a pack. Uh, uh, iPad itself, then subsequently um, there is a QR code for you to scan uh, to the waiting uh, hall. Okay, so we also provide an LD screen just like an airport. Okay, we adopted the, the model which is the, the LD screen will display the departure and arrival of all the buses. So it is for the convenience of the passengers. So what we say that this is like a, 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 a airport model in a smaller scale in, in the terminal operations. Lah. Okay, so Terminal Maruaya is actually a two-story building and a basement car park. So in a year, there is actually two millions of food for, uh, of people that pass by our terminal. Why is it this data very important to us? Okay, because the majority of the revenue from our terminal is actually generated from rental of advertising and promotional space which means all the pillars, all the walls inside, outside of our terminal, you bought everything. So we ran out to media agency to help us to manage. So we will actually receive a fixed monthly rental from them. Okay. And then the promotional spaces will be like lobby, concourse areas. We also ran to media uh, agency to help us to, to actually uh, deal with the end customer. So we just received a fixed monthly rental. So we are secure in that sense. Okay. Other than that, we also have uh, additional revenue coming from rental of shop and kiosks. Okay, and then we have like a uh, profit sharing. We have uh, some of the entrance fees and so forth. Okay, so just like I mentioned that uh, it's actually a two stories building and, and a basement car park. So it's a mature terminal. So we are operating for uh, more than eight years. The land size is around 8.3 acres. The gross leasable area is around 51,000 square feet. But in Terminal Maruaya, there is more express bus operator that is operating, which is 55 operating operators are operating in our terminal. Okay, so later I will do a comparison with Gampa Putra Central. So, okay, for Gampa Putra Central, we also share two pictures here. One is the previous uh, express bus station. Okay, once our Kampa Putra Centre have obtained the full CCC in 7th of August 2020 last year, so all the express bus operators are regulated to move to our terminal. So you can see that the size of it is actually much more bigger than our Maruaya because the size of it is actually eight times bigger. Okay, so why we actually choose Kampa to build a terminal? Because Kampa is a university town. So we know that university town is uh, will always be growing so that you'll be growing our populations uh, in terms of students or maybe the local residents and so forth. So that is Utah, Keta, Westlake International Schools that is, is uh, just five minutes away from our terminal. So they are from this side. Okay. And then the local residents is around 100,000. So in Gampa. Okay. 
but um, there is only 12 express bus operators. So compared to Maru Raya, there is lesser, there will be lesser passengers and operators, but our offerings is very different from uh, uh, the, the Maru Raya. Lah, okay? Because this building, um, we actually have uh, entertainment center, sports center, and then we will have uh, supermarkets, and then a university renting in one floor in our terminal, which is UTM. Okay, so currently they have around 150 students intake, but they are target to grow to 3,000 to and uh, to further to 5,000 in future. Okay, we also have a three stories of hotel, uh, but two stories we are going to convert to hostel to rent it to UTM students to cater for their needs. Okay, one story of the hotel we are making as budget hotel. So there is a lot of offerings and a one-stop center uh, offered to the residents in, in Gampa itself. Okay, you can see that it's actually a 11 stories building. Okay, the, there is a CCC day. Last year we obtained it. The land size is only 3.7 acres, but the gross leasable area is eight times bigger. It's around 400,000 square feet. Okay, so this is about Gampa Putra Central. Okay, we move on to bus operations. Okay, bus operations, basically, we have three different kinds of services. The first one is called it stage or city bus. Okay, so we have signed two contracts with the federal government. The first contract is called interim stage bus support fund, which passengers come out to our bus, they pay me bus fare. That is my revenue, okay? But if at the end of the month, if I'm having any operational loss, I will report back to the federal government. The federal government will pay me a subsidy to cover my loss. Okay, so this is the first program. The second program is called a stage bus services transformation program. Passengers come out to our bus, they pay me bus fare. Okay, but that is not my revenue. At the end of the month, I need to accumulate all these bus fare and pass it back to the federal government. So what I receive from the government is based on cost per kilometer run, which means that if today is a raining day, no one come up to our bus. So I still continue to provide the service. So the government will still pay me cost per kilometer run. So this is the beauty of um, stage bus which means that it's not based on ridership. It's actually based on the services that we provided to the public. So majority of our buses is consists of a stage bus and city bus. Okay, so second type of our buses is called express buses. Okay, so express buses, we know that there is no subsidy from government. That's why we are very picky on choosing only profitable routes to run. For example, we are only running to um, short for this uh, short distance, for example, to uh, Lumu, Cameron, Taiping, Inang, Butterworth, TDS, Charas, and so forth. So we are not running to Singapore, Kelantan, and Chengganu. So we are only running short for. Only need one driver so that uh, we are able to save costs in that sense. And then we are only uh, choose profitable routes to run. Okay. The third services that we provided is called charter bus and bus advertisement. Okay, we utilize our spare bus to rent out um, for activities. Okay, so they can rent out buses for, for their activities, either is uh, public or private sectors. Okay, our buses also wrap with bus advertisement. Okay, from time to time, we also uh, able to secure contracts with uh, local council or federal government, for example, pair up hot on and hot off bus. So this is a, a, a partner with a tourism pair up where the buses will bring all the passengers to the uh, tourist spot in, in Para itself, okay, during weekends and public holidays. So, so that is another um, uh, things, uh, the, the services that add value in, in terms of bus uh, operations. Okay, so bus operations uh, only consist of 21% of our total group revenue in 2020. Okay, in terms of operating profit, it consists of 6% out of the whole group. Okay, so next we go to petrol station. So petrol stations, uh, again, is a support activities. We have four petrol stations in total, all located in Para. Two with Shell brand, one with BHP, and another with Petron. So uh, like mentioned earlier, this is a support to our bus operations. Our buses can pump petrol at our own petrol station, but these are 
they are also open for public lah. Okay, so but we know that um, the, the, the margins and then the earnings is not significant lah, from pet petrol station. Okay, so um, I have basically covered the business overview. Now I will go to the second area, which is the quarterly, fourth quarterly results and 2020 results lah, uh, in a summary. So there is there are actually five um, highlights here. The first one is this is actually the group best quarterly and full year earnings. Okay. Secondly, is more than half of the revenue, around 60%, is derived from the terminal operation. Okay, third point is the profit margin expanded further because we have increased in uh, terminal operations, the revenue uh, increase in terminal operations. So basically, the margin from terminal operation is very high. The gross profit margin is around 80%. So when you increase the terminal uh, operations revenue, it helps to increase your, your profit margin. Okay, fourth point is healthy balance sheet. So later, I will go through that. Uh, we have actually reduced the net gearing and also the net debt. So the last point is tapping on new opportunities in terminal. This is basically regarding terminal management services. So I will cover in more detail later on. Okay, so here is some comparison, third quarter versus fourth quarter 2020 comparison. Okay, our fourth quarter reported the best quarterly revenue increased by around 1% Q on Q. Okay, so due to the increase in revenue in from the terminal operations, okay, uh, from the terminal operations is also thanks to the increase in the profit project facilitation fees from two projects in fourth quarter, and then additional NP income, advertising and promotional income from Gampa Putra Central. Okay, so um, subsequently regarding the Patami. Patami also strengthened by around 10% Q on Q. And then the profit before tax uh, was lifted by around 11% Q on Q. Okay, this again uh, also due to the higher revenue and earnings from terminal operations. And another factors, which is the interest expand, actually felt Q on Q on weaker interest rate and also the lower debt level. Okay, next is actually the fourth quarter 2019 versus the fourth quarter 2020 result. So the revenue increased by around 8% uh, year on year. Okay, so this again, uh, it's thanks to the terminal operation revenue, rose by around 54% year on year, despite the fall in the bus operations and petrol station revenue. Uh, due to the uh, our, the traffic was affected and our we voluntarily actually um, stopped the bus operations in all reflected in the second quarter to help to contain the spread of the pandemic. Lah. So everything, uh, all the drop, sales drops from petrol stations and bus operations all already reflected in the second quarter. Okay, so that's why um, in a year, year on year comparison. So there is a drop in these two uh, sectors, but the terminal operation rose by around 54%. Okay. And then the Patani also strengthened by around 12% year on year, also due to the same reason, contributions from terminal operations, also due to the net interest expense felt lah, due to the costs and then the level of borrowings declined. Okay, so the next slide is regarding the 12 months 2019 versus the 2020 comparisons, result comparisons. Okay, the revenue um, was dropped by around 4% year on year, but the Patami was dropped by around 5% year on year. So the drop again is due to the bus operation and petrol station revenue fell. Okay, but the increase in Patami is due to the higher terminal operations contributions. Lah. Okay, so the profit before tax was lifted around 20% year on year okay, in 2020. So next, okay, next about our financial positions as at the 1st December 2020. Okay, you can see that our fourth quarter net debt level actually fell around 3% year on year and around 10% year on year. Okay, this, uh, uh, we have to thanks to the successful conversion of warrants uh, in 2020, which helped us to 
to be able to obtain a 120 million cash inflow. So we have utilized some of these cash inflows to repay our super uh, borrowings. Lah. Okay, so that's why our net debt fell. Okay, our gearing actually declined from second quarter 2020 for around 78%. To 46% in third quarter, and I felt further felt to 43% in the fourth quarter. Okay, so the gross borrowing fell to 226 million compared to 291 million in third quarter 2020, and also as compared to 301 million fourth quarter 2019. This again uh, due to our repayments of our partial repayments of support borrowings. Okay. So here there is a six years financial performance trend. You can see that from, from, the, from the chart itself, it's actually all uptrend in terms of revenues and earnings. The five year revenue growth rate is around 10% and the average gross profit margin is around 45%. Okay, and then the EBITDA margin is also expanding throughout the six years. The Patani five years growth rate is around 17%. Okay, so here we would like to share a pie chart about our terminal operations revenue in 2015, 2019, and 2020. Okay, you can see that the terminal operations revenue increased from 40% in 2015 to 60% in 2020. So the breakdown of revenue in 2020 is 60% come from the terminal operation. 21% come on bus operations and 19% come from the petrol station. Okay, so next is actually the growth strategy. The first one will be the develop, own, and operate. In short, we call it DOO. Okay, so currently we have um, two terminals which we own and operate. So just as I mentioned, the first one is Terminal Maruaya, second one is Kampa Bukwa Central. Okay, so the second growth strategy is called terminal management services. Okay, so this is the excitement in 2021 and moving forward. So um, how, how is this works and how is it different from DOO? Okay, so in Malaysia, there is more than 100 terminals which is owned and operated by the local council. Okay, we have a lot of options uh, for, for the local council. Lah. So if, for example, the existing terminal like uh, Muraya and like uh, Sampa Putra, so we cannot help to uh, upgrade anymore. So we will suggest to them, maybe we can move the terminal to a new site. So we will develop an entirely newly built building. Lah. Okay, but it will be owned and operated by us. But of course, uh, the disadvantages is uh, it will involve a high capex. Okay, so but then we will have another option if the existing terminal is mature and, the con and then we are able to help them to upgrade the existing terminal. So we suggest to them, okay, maybe we come up with a minimal capex, maybe less than 10 million per terminal. Okay, we help you to upgrade uh, the terminal, implement centralized ticketing system so that the terminal will have a better grade. Okay, so in return, either we receive a fixed management fee or maybe uh, or based on a profit sharing basis, or maybe we help you to manage the commercial area so that we have uh, the entire revenue and earnings from the renter of that commercial area. So there is a lot of um, options that we can offer to the uh, public, uh, to the local council. So this is, we call it terminal management services. So which means that the terminal is not owned by us. So we are helping the local council to renovate to upgrade and to manage. So in return, we will have uh, either either a uh, fixed management fees or in other forms. Lah. So, so that is called a terminal management services. So the benefit of it is smaller capex will be involved, but with more recurring earnings and visible earnings. Okay, and faster earnings. Lah. Okay, third is expand profit margin from cost saving to new technologies. Okay, for example, um, with the centralized ticketing system, it's actually a technology tweak. So we are also uh, creating an app 
that so that um, the, the stage bus passengers can actually download the app and then they can assess what is the estimated time of arrival of the next buses. And then uh, they can assess the bus routes, the bus, uh, the buses that we are going to stop, in which bus stop and so forth. So all the information in that particular app. So um, that, that, that is another um, initiative lah, in terms of technology. So we haven't launched the app yet but we'll be launched uh, very soon. Lah. Okay, next slide. So it will be more detailed about the DOO, which is the Develop, Own and Operate. So other than Terminal Monfrayer and Gamba Putra Central, what is next? Okay, the next terminals we plan to build uh, wholly owned under the DOO model is called Bidor Central. Okay, we already acquired a piece of land, 4.9 acres. So why we actually um, would like to choose Bido to build a terminal? Because of a few reasons. The first one is because the local council would like to close down the existing terminal in Bido and Tapa. Okay. Second reason is because Bido is an important access road to Cameron Highland. So third reason is because just 15 minutes away, there is a university. So there is a, a student's uh, needs. Lah in Bido itself. Fourth reason is because for Sun they are going to move their new site in Bido. So we, the, with the development of Bido Central, we are not only serving the local council, uh, the local residents, but we are also serving the students, the factory workers, the tourists, and so forth. Okay, so but Bido Central, we know that it will develop under the own and operate basis. So the capex, uh, it will be more than 100 million. So the construction is expected to start in second half of this year. Okay. So Trono will be uh, something after Bido. So Bido will take around two years to complete. Like, the constructions will take around two years. So after, what is next after Bido, it might be Trono or it might be uh, other more strategic uh, located uh, site. Like. Okay, so that one we get to discover. Okay, so this is under DOO. Okay, we're back to terminal management's contract. In January, we actually able to secure a collaboration agreement, a nine years agreement. Okay, starting from the revenue contribution, actually start in 1st of February, 2021. Okay, for nine years period. So the capex that will be involved is around 3.5 million. Will be amortized over nine years. Okay, so this is actually based on a fixed management fees, 1.2 million um, management fees per year, subject to a 3% uh, minimum increment of the management fees every single year. Okay, so 3% is just the minimum, last, so we can negotiate for a higher uh, percentage uh, in terms of footfall factors, uh, the tenancy able to secure and so on. Okay, so the first one that we are go, uh, we, we already secured is called Huantan Central. So the second terminal that we have announced in February this year is called Terminal Bus Shahab Pratana, which is from Alosta. Okay, we are able to secure a 15 years contract. So the revenue contributions may, will start maybe in 1st of April 2022 or upon completions of the renovation works Okay, of that particular terminal, whichever is earlier. Lah. Okay, so normally construction works will take around um, three, uh, six months, lah, around six months. So it depends on uh, when the, uh, the renovations work are able to be completed. Okay, so, it, so, so that the revenue contributions and the earning contributions can be earlier lah, than maybe it can be uh, by second half of this year. Okay. So the capex that will be involved is around 6.5 million. It will be amortized over 15 years. So the model is a bit different here. So there is no fixed management fees. There is a variable and upside, okay? Which means that we help to manage the commercial areas uh, in that particular terminal, okay? So which means, which means that we can lease out uh, the advertising and promotion in the commercial areas, the shop and kiosks, and so forth. So we, 
we we are able to secure that that part lah. So why is it different? Why is it Alostar Central different from the Kuantan Central? That is a two uh, different in terms of the model. This is because um it's part of the risk management lah. Okay, because uh for Alostar Central there is a lot of anchor tenants already show their interest that they would like to um, rent a space in in the commercial areas. So. With, with that um, feedback, positive feedback from the uh, tenants itself, potential tenants itself. So we would like to capture the opportunity to, to, to capture all the rental received from the commercial area instead of just obtain a fixed management fees. Okay. Whereas for Kuantan Central, we want to be more uh, conservative. For the time being, we want to secure a fixed management fees like for the time being. But in future, there might also be an upside because we can negotiate for a higher uh, increment in terms of management fees, or maybe we can negotiate and maybe can we change the model a bit and so forth. So, so that is the difference between these two terminals. Okay, so below is some of the um, uh, key, key areas that uh, mention what is the difference between DOO and TMC. Okay, DOO one terminal it will cost more than 100 million. Okay, but TMC one terminal will cost less than 10 million. Okay, so the second point is about the timing. So build one new terminal, it will take at least two years. Okay, but to renovate it and then to start to operate, it will take lesser time. It will take around between uh, three to six months. So, so that basically is the difference between the DOO and TMC. Okay, next is about the expand profit margin. Okay, in 2015, our EBITDA margin is around 45%. It actually grew to 65% in 2020. Okay, so that is a track record in improving the margin. So there is a few um, factors. One is we focus on growing the terminal operations. Okay, so we are actually not only improving the attractiveness of the terminal itself, but we also help to provide more offerings to the neighborhood. <clears throat> so the second factor is actually maximizing advertising and promotional content. Because most of our advertising is uh, on a printing media basis. So we, in future, we can slowly convert it into more digital platform so, we, so that we can renegotiate for a higher rental rate with the media agency. La. Okay, so third factor is turning cost base into profit center. For example, uh, our petrol stations operations is not only as a cost center to our bus operation, but it's, all, it's, it's also open for public. So it's uh, turning it into profit center. So we are also considering similar opportunity. For example, our express bus, uh, we have compartments. So maybe in future we can uh, partner with a career service. So uh, we can help to deliver a smaller cluster from terminal A to terminal B. Then the career service can help to uh, deliver the smaller cluster to the end customer. So that is a possibility. So that, that is a lot of um, uh, opportunity like, for us to explore. The fourth factor is about the operating scale. So we will actually secure more terminal management services contracts in future. Uh, so it will be this year and moving forward and also secure more bus services contract. Okay, so um, this is basically the last slide. Okay, so I would like to emphasize on a few um, positive investment fundamentals. So there is five uh, factors here. One is uh, our business is basically unique. This is due to there is basically no direct benchmark like in Malaysia. That there is no one company that uh, own and operate a terminal, own and operate a stage bus, express bus, and also a petrol station. So there is basically no direct uh, benchmark and no direct uh, comparison. Uh, what we can see. Okay, the second point is resilient base. Okay. With the pandemic uh, in place like uh, last year and so forth, so we are still able to deliver a, a good uh, financial results and increase uh, started the uh, operations in Gampaputra Central, uh, started to secure the uh, rental income from the terminal and so forth. So, and then able to increase the revenue contribution from the terminal operations so that our profit margin are able to uh, increase in that sense. 
Okay, the third factor is new opportunities. So, um, like mentioned, there is more than 100 terminals owned and operated by uh, local councils. So, there is a lot of opportunity for us to explore the ideas to help them to develop, own, and operate a new terminal or uh, help them to manage and renovate an uh, existing terminal. So there is a lot of opportunity in that sector. So fourth is the expansion phase. So we are actually running two engines at, at uh, one time, lah, which means one, the first engine is to develop, own, and operate. Okay. The second one will be the terminal management services. So we are running concurrently. Okay. The last factor is good financial. This, um, like I mentioned during the pandemic, so we already we, we have a recurring income in our books and so forth. So so we still are able to deliver a good financial results in 2020. La. Okay, before I pass to Dato to do a conclusion, so uh, I will I will um, touch on two more items, which is the first one is regarding our dividend. La. So during our fourth quarter result, we have uh, announced that. We, we are going to distribute a first interim dividend of RM 0.008 per shares or 0.8 cents per shares okay, uh, to, to award the shareholders. And secondly, previously, we also say that we are committed to pay a quarterly dividend to award shareholders. Thirdly, is we have announced that uh, we have formalized our dividend policy. La. Previously, our dividend policy is to pay up to 25% of our net profit. But based on our track report, we have been paying around 35%. And then um, in 2020, we are paying around 41%. Okay, so we have formalized the dividend policy to pay at least 35% of our net profit to the shareholders. So this is this part is regarding the dividend. Okay, the second part I want to um, cover is about the MCO 2.0. So MCO 2.0 is unlike MCO 1.0 because operation yeah, is, a, is op uh, operating as usual, uh, is ongoing. Okay, due to four reasons. The first reason is because our advertising and promotion. So we sign contract annually with our media agency. Okay, so by right, the contract will be expired in the first of March this year, but we are able to secure and obtain an early renewal of our contract early this year, which means in January. So we are able to secure that contract. So the contract has been renewed without any reduction in the rental rate. So that part has been secured because that is very important. That is the major revenue from our terminal operations. Okay, so that one set up. So the second point is the rental income from our terminal, either is it from A&P or either is it from shop and kiosk. So those are actually fixed in terms of because contract has been signed. Lah. So which means that uh, the rental income basically has been secure because contract, everything has been uh, signed uh, on a fixed term. Okay, thirdly is because project facilitation fees is still ongoing because we at least have a one year or the boat in hand. Fourth reason is because terminal management services negotiations are still ongoing because there is a dem demand to, to upgrade the terminal like in Malaysia. Okay, so thank you very much. I'll pass on to Dato to do a conclusion before we open up for Q&A session. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. I'm here speaking in Mandarin. Eh? Uh, 在COVID-19的这段时期啊，我们的集团在明年里仍然是拥有稳定的收入。当疫苗的出现呢，帮助国家的经济复苏，也对我们的集团有了很多的发展的机会。当地的活动量也在大幅增加，这也提升我们巴
Okay, thank you, Dato. So we may open up for Q and A. Okay, thank you so much, Dato Chong. Uh, would you ever want to uh, give us like a translated summary of what Dato have just said to our oh, okay, okay. Uh, our Malay and also Indian okay. friends? Okay, sure. Uh, okay, so I will translate a bit. Lah. So, okay, during the pandemic, our group has recurring income from our existing operations. With the recovery of economy due to post vaccinations, it will help our group to grow further. The increasing domestic mobility post vaccinations will help to increase the footfalls and the rental income in our terminals. The crowd in our terminals will increase when the borders are reopened and the public are allowed to cross states. Thank you. All right, great. So, uh, so right now, I think uh, all of us here have understand, okay, uh, that uh, Para Transit has a record profit year in twenty nineteen. <laughs> And uh, of course, we look forward for you know, a better performance in 2021 and onwards. So for those of you who have any questions to ask uh, Dato and also Jennifer, uh, who are respectively the Executive Director of Parrot Transit and also the Chief Financial Officer of Parrot Transit Berhad, uh, please key in and type your questions in the Q&A box, not the chat box. If you're tuning in from Zoom, please type it in the Q&A box because uh, in the chat box, right, there will be messages then we could be, we, we might miss and overlook your, your question. So please type it in the Q&A box. And now uh, we have about 15 minutes for the Q&A until about 9.30. So yeah, please keep your questions coming. Huh? But for those, because right now I see on the screen, we already have so many questions. So if you feel that your questions have already been answered, uh, by uh, Jennifer or also Dato, uh, you can actually dismiss your own question. If you feel that your question has already been answered uh, in the presentation, you can also dismiss the question so we can uh, 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 ask those questions that are re relevant and pertinent. All right. Okay, on my screen, I have uh, 50 over questions right now. <laughs> <laughs> so of course, if Jennifer, you have any question that you would like to uh, answer, so you can also uh, uh, let, let us know. Huh? Okay. Okay, so the first question is by uh, Roger Fong, who wants to ask, would you be able to share like how long are the contracts with the media companies for the advertising space? For example, are they on annual renewal basis? Okay, um, yes, they are actually on an uh, annual renewal basis with both the media agency uh, at both the terminals. Lah. So why is it so? Because we like to negotiate for a higher rental rate every single year. Because the rental rate is actually both based on the footfall factors and also spaces available and also the market condition. So like in Maruraya, in our past um, five years, growth rate is around 6%. Or so so, so that, is, uh, that, that we can actually use that data to negotiate for a higher rental rate. That's why the, the contract is fixed at an annual basis. Mm, okay. Uh, the, the next question is by Adia, who, who want to ask that uh, uh, in relation to your uh, debt level. So there are still a net debt of about 200 million to date. So the first question is, when will the debt be reduced to a more manageable amount since P-Trans is a profitable uh, company? So second question is, when is P-Trans going to be a net cash company? <laughs> uh, okay, okay. Regarding our net debt, right, because um, in our suku arrangements, is uh, based on a quarterly repayment basis. So the suku is for uh, seven years. Lah. But we have do uh, early repayments in the fourth quarter, so uh, it will help us to reduce our net debt. Okay, so um, why is it uh, we, we are actually a net debt company? So basically, we are a growing and expanding company. So we will need um, financing to, to, to actually help us to, to expand uh, either uh, mainly in, for example, we want to develop, own and operate a new terminal. So we will need um, that uh, upfront to help us to, to actually uh, go for the construction cost. Lah. But the, the revenue, the earnings will, will come back uh, once we have opened for operations. Lah. Because we are basically an uh, operating and expanding company. Mm, okay, uh, thank you, Jennifer. So the next question is asked by uh, Chong Binghina. So uh, 
may I know like who are your competitors and uh, you know do you think there will be more terminals built and operated by other uh, players? Okay, um, like I have disclosed earlier, uh, in Malaysia, most of the terminal is actually owned and operated by the local council. Lah. So very uh, little uh, private sectors that own and operate. Lah. So we are one of it. And Penang Central is owned and operated by MRCB. So it's very, very little company will basically own and operate a terminal. So that's why there is a lot of opportunities. So why is it so? Because maybe I can share a bit on the high barriers to entry. Lah. Okay, so there is a few um, factors like, in terms of high barriers to entry in our industry. So the first one is very high capex. Lah. So if to build a newly uh, built terminal, it will cost you more than 100 million. So um, it's very difficult to get financing uh, if you are new in this industry. So because we have our track records and we have our experience and so forth, so it's easier for us. And then secondly, we'll need the expertise because um, we, we always say that it's different. Building a terminal is very different from building a mall. So um, building a terminal, the land usage of it, you will need to be a terminal bus. And in every city, they only allow one express bus terminal and one city bus terminal. And the state government already draw in their master plan where is the location of the terminal. So if you really occupy that piece of land, so it's very difficult to for others to, to actually basically to replace it. Lah. Okay. And then subsequently, before you start the constructions, we need the support from the uh, local council and the federal government. So how to gain the support is basically if you have the uh, track records and the experience and if you are doing the uh, right things uh, all this while so that that is basically a very strong point for you to get a support lah, from from the government itself. all right thank you so much jennifer um the next question is asked by bu ping uh, what is the projected earnings for 2021 and 2022 what are the factors that will affect the company's earnings apart from the current covid uh, pandemic situation. Uh, okay, so so I cannot um, disclose in one term. So, uh, but there will be a growth la, uh, absolutely because um, our Kampa terminal uh, just started in September 2020. So, 2021 is basically the first year contribution from Kampa terminal. So, so that is uh, the the add value and then the additional earnings to our bottom line. So secondly, we have ventured into this terminal management services. In previous year, we didn't have this additional revenue. So if, for example, um, every year we are able to secure at least four to five uh, this kind of contract, this figure will multiply every single year and it's recurring uh, and then it is uh, secure like, in that sense. So um, what I can say that there will, there will absolutely be a growth. So uh, at least a double-digit growth. Like. Mm, wow, good to hear that double digit growth. <laughs> the the next question is uh, asked by uh, Huai Yong Ching. Now it seems that your business model is kind of uh, capital intensive in uh, relations to uh, uh, whether your DOO model or TMC model. Uh, like may, may I know like what is the return on the assets? Uh? Okay, so DOO model basically. Uh, the, actually, both for both models, uh, the, the return of it is actually uh, more than 20%. Nah. But the margin of it is, is actually very high. It's around 80% in terms of gross profit margin. But for DOO, of course, um, the payback period will be longer. Lah. But for terminal management services, the payback period will be much more short, shorter. Mm. Okay. The next question is asked by uh, Aziz Bashir. What is the plan for the APP mentioned by Jennifer and how did the APP increase the revenue and profit? Okay, I think she's mentioning about the NP, which means the advertising and promotional. Okay, so um, just now we mentioned that we have uh, already renewed the the advertising and promotion contract with our media agency for 2021. So uh, this is, will be renewed annually because uh, of the negotiation uh, for a higher rental rate. So like I mentioned, the, how, how can this rental rate increase in the future? One is based on the footfall. 
So if, for example, post um, COVID, okay, uh, the, the footfall, um, because the economy recoveries and then post vaccinations, so all the domestic activities will be will resume uh, basically. So it will help us to have more footfall in our terminals because when all the travels, uh, all the active business activities uh, resumes and so forth. So it will help us to actually increase the footfall. And also secondly, is the spaces available. Like Gampa Putra Central, what we are charging is actually two thirds of what we are charging at Maru Raya. So why is it so? Because Terminal Maru Raya is a mature terminal. It has been operating for more than eight years. Okay, so it has all the footfall data, the growth rate and so forth. So Gampa Putra Central, this is just our first year operation. So we need to gather the football data and so forth. So, and then um, with the students coming back to the UC, especially on the UTM that ran one stories at our terminal. So that will bring at least like 3,000 to 5,000 students in future. That will be a captive, uh, captive market lah in our terminal. So, so that, that, that will actually help us, uh, factors to help us to negotiate for a higher rental rate. Uh, in terms of advertising and promotional. So there is a lot of room to grow, especially for Gampa Putra Central. Mm, that's great. Um, the next question is by uh, Chua Wai Min. Uh. Can you share more about the uh, project facilitation fee, PFF? Now, understood from your IPO prospectus that the PFF is generally one-off item. But from the recent financial reports, it is not just continuously recurring, but also consistently increased in size. Okay, maybe I can share about uh, the project facilitation fees, how it works first. Okay, so how, how it works basically is uh, there is this uh, third party project managers that uh, partner with us to, to actually they, they go out and pitch for those interested parties that they would like to build a terminal in a second tier city, okay? But um, like I mentioned, because uh, the, the expertise in this industry is very, uh, uh, I mean, very limited like, because uh, majority is owned by, uh, owned by the local council. So very limited private companies that have this kind of expertise. Like. So basically they partner with us. So we will provide a consultancy services to guide their clients out, okay, whether is it feasible to build a terminal in that particular location, whether is it in, in the master plan of the state government, okay, so how is the construction cost like, what is the facilities that we should put inside the terminal, so what is the justification for us to build a terminal, and what is the, should we add a mold, what is the facilities that we need to put in, uh? so we will get them from A to Z, uh, construction cost wise, operating cost, and so forth, okay. So once we have um, prepared a concept paper with all the justification, all the, uh, the, the construction costs, the drawings and so forth. So upon mutual agreements, uh, mutual uh, agree with, with that concept paper, we will build them 2.5% of the total gross development cost. Okay, so we will build them. So it is actually a one-off project in that sense, but like I mentioned, there is a lot of opportunity in Malaysia because there's more than 100 terminals that is owned and operated by the local council. So there might be a lot of developers that uh, they are interested to, to also um, own a land in a new township. So because terminal normally is the one that helps to initiate the, the footfall and then the development in that new township. So that is very important to have a terminal in every township. So if uh, that, that particular client is a developer that own the, the land, in, so they just need to build a terminal, then surrounding um, their shop lots or residential houses, so that that, that can sell. Lah. Okay, so, but we always say, tell people that uh, project facilitation fees will not last forever. Okay, but it will not phase out or disappear in the short term. Okay, so based on the study that we have, so the current market shares that we have is around 20% currently. Okay, so if we grow to 30% in future, so this project facilitation fee will still last for two and a half years. But if grow further to 40%, it can last for five, another five years. If grow further to 50%, it can grow for seven years. So 
the max that we think we can advise is 50%, uh, so we cannot be advising all the terminals in Malaysia. So 50%, it, at least it can still last for seven years. So, so it will not phase out in the short term, it will at least last for like between five to seven years. But by that time, our Tampa Putra Central will be matured, okay? We'll have uh, all the revenue and uh, earnings coming in and so forth. And then we will have like Vidor Central, we will have a lot of terminal management services. There will be a lot of expansions and development in our, uh, in our group. Lah. So then if one day this uh, project facilitation fee slowly phase out, it will not significantly impact our bottom line. Okay. So, and then in 2021, you can also see that the project facilitation fees will be slowly diluted by the uh, additional incomes from uh, Tampa Putra Central or Terminal uh, Management Services. So, you can see that actually our main revenue is actually from rental of shop and, uh, sorry, rental of advertising and promotional. Okay. Okay. The... Next question is asked by uh, Pani Molly. Uh, what is your outlook on uh, consumer demand to travel uh, going forward? And uh, will your overall CAPEX in 2021 be higher than 2020? Uh, okay, so regarding uh, the, the, the domestic travel, we, we think that in 2021, uh, post COVID uh, or after the vaccinations or Post MCO, so the domestic um, the travel uh, mobilities will actually increase lah. So basically, because there is no more restrictions to uh, cross state or cross border and so forth, so that will actually increase. That's why we say that our footfall in our terminals will definitely increase lah by that sense. Okay, for cap in terms of capex, uh, yes, it will increase in twenty twenty one and going forward due to terminal management services. We already secured two terminals currently. So that will involve uh, a bit of uh, capex, but minimal capex. Lah. But our Bido Central is expected to commence the construction second half of this year. So that again, will, there, there will be a bit of capex, lah. but it will throughout the, the more than 100 million uh, construction costs will be throughout a two years period. Lah. So it will be between, uh, it will be over three years, 2021, 2022, and 2023. So the revenue contribution expected to commence in second half of 2023. All right. All right. Thanks, Jennifer. Uh, the next question yeah. is asked by Sean Chua. Uh, he has several questions. Uh, so let me ask the, the first one first. Uh, the, the, so his question is all re revolving around the your DOO terminal, which is uh, which are Meru Raya and Putra Central. So the first question is, do you own the terminals and lands? Yes. All right. The second no question. Concession. Yeah. The second question is, do you have a concession with the local council with protective clause that this allow other new terminals to be built in the same area? No, no. There, there is no concession. So the land and building is owned by us. Okay. Are there any expiry date to the concession? Uh, there's none, no concession. <laughs> no, no expiry date. Uh, no, no concession. <clears throat> but no, there's the no land, concession, right? Uh, no concession. Okay. Can the fourth and final question is can bus operators choose not to use your terminal but operate from other side? Like they drop off passenger without entering your terminal? Uh, cannot because our terminal has been accepted by the local council. So it's regulated for all the express bus that pass by before have to pick up and drop off the passengers in our terminal. If, for example, they pick up and drop off the passengers in front of their shop lots outside, so it's actually illegal. Lah. So the local council can uh, actually uh, summon them. Oh, okay. So that is good to uh, P trans. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, there are also questions in Chinese. Huh? So I'm not sure if Dato would like to take it. Uh, so, this question is from Chien 
还有带动了这那些旅游业啊，因为每个国家它发展发达的国家，通常人家也看都是那个公共交通的辛苦啊，比如新加坡那些、香港那些，人家一来看就知道那个这公共交通道路发生总站，一看这个总站就，他每个都要发发展他的本地那个他的作望啊，在我们来看未来的计划呢。会会很好了，嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯，好的，太太棒了，谢谢太棒了。<笑>那接下来呢？这个问题是来自艾兹呃 Lim 啊，说他想问达多，就是那同时间发展 DOO 还有 TMC 这种生意模式会造成呃公司的负担吗？像因为我们呃发展我们自己的车站呢，我们不全部会。因为我们做那个呃，跟出发展级那个不会带我们很大的那个很很大的那个钱啊，出很大的钱。因为我们发展那个本地那个局，那个州级那个车站啊，总站来讲呢，我们大概是六个米链左右到八个米链左右啦。因为我们建我们自己的本一个车站，差不多要一百二十个米链左右啦。通常这样我们。每每两年计划里面会建一个本本我们自己的总站呐、啊，不会带来很大的很大的影响啊，啊，嗯 ，OK， 所以没有太大影响 ，OK， 啊，没有太大的影响。我、哦、我们谢谢达豆为我们解答两个呃中文的问题，那接下来我们就用英文来问了哈，所、so、以 we will 呃、uh, get back to our the, those English questions， so 呃、uh, just let me。Have a look, ah.、Huh? Now, uh, the the question that asked by several people is, you know, I I see that there are some common questions that ask about, uh, how is um P uh Para Transit going to fund all the expansions going forward, lah? Because that seems to be like you know a lot of projects, you know, in the pipeline. Okay, so um because we have the Uh, success. We have a successful、uh, completion of Warren, so that is around one hundred and twenty million. So not all the funds we have utilized to、uh, repay the partial repay our support lah. So there is extra fund for expansion, and then secondly, uh, from our support is actually a five hundred、uh, million program. So we have already only draw down three hundred million. So if There is a need. We can draw down a balance of a two hundred million in future for for further expansions, lah. So so that is a few options for us to to funds, lah. Of course, we also have our internally generated funds for all the existing operations and uh new and upcoming operations. Okay. All right. There's a question by uh Tan Yiping, who uh. Uh, said that ah,、uh, who asked how high is the risk that the advertisers do not renew their advertisements since MCO and COVID had reduced the crowd? Ah,、uh, since terminals contribute the majority of this revenue, will this be detrimental to the group's revenue? Okay, so I think we should have ah、uh, go gone through the ah、uh, worst worst year lah for 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 everyone, which is the pandemic year, mostly in twenty twenty. So 2021,、uh, it will be、uh, a better year because of the vaccinations and the economy recoveries and then the opening up of the borders and so forth. So in 2020, even during the pandemic、um, year, the the rental of advertising and promotions there is actually no reductions in terms of the prices. So we only give、uh, a bit of discount, a、uh, three months discount to our shop and kiosk. Tenants in the second quarter, but it does not significantly affect、uh, our bottom line. So for advertising and promotion, is、uh, very much secure in that sense that、uh, is actually、uh, no discount provided in, in the we can say worst year a pandemic year lah. So in twenty twenty one, we are also able to renew,、uh, have an early re renewal of that that、uh, rental. So so I I we wouldn't foresee that that. Will be any issues with with the media agency lah, okay. So and then we are also developing and expanding uh our terminals in 
in other states and other cities and so forth. So if um, the media agencies that are uh, making profits, they will of course uh, co-partner with us so that uh, we can bring them along in all the projects, in all the future projects. So, so that's why there is no reason for them to terminate. Uh. Okay. <laughs> Uh, we have uh, questions from uh, YouTube who, who want to ask that, you know, uh, this is by Hanafi. Do you see local councils privatizing the management of lo local terminals to companies in the future of this business? Um, as I mentioned, there is very little private companies that own and operate uh, terminals. Lah. So, and we are actually building our terminals based on a private funding initiative. We are using our own funds. So, um, the local council would, would encourage uh, the private sectors to, partic to participate because um, we are actually uh, working out our own uh, capex to help uh, the, the governments to to upgrade and improve the public infrastructures in Malaysia's law. So, so it's actually a win-win situation in, in all, all, all areas like, and between all parties. Mm, okay. The, the next question is by uh, Yong Singer. Uh, any comments on uh, your site businesses, namely the petrol stations, bus operation and mining management? What is the prospect for these uh, business divisions? Um, as we can see in the quarterly report, petrol stations and bus operation business is going down the slope. Any plans by P-Trans to amend the situations or P-Trans is currently focusing on DOO and TMC only? Mm. Well, I mentioned the bus operation and petrol stations uh, basically is a support activities. But um, it's also very important uh, to us because uh, like I mentioned buses being help to bring crops to our terminals. Okay, for our bus operations, uh, uh, even during the uh, pandemic, because it, it doesn't really significantly affect us, uh, yes, the revenue did drop, but the earnings actually uh, did, did recover, uh, uh, which means that recover quite okay, so in terms of the earnings. Because the uh, majority of our buses is consists of stage bus instead of express bus. So stage bus, which means that we can still operate within the city, la, so no need to cross border. And then we have a, a, secure, and, uh, a, a secure subsidy from the government. So it's not based on ridership, it's actually based on the services provided. So that one is in terms of bus services. So in future, we will... Um, secure more uh, projects with the local council, like for example, like the projects that we obtained for Para Hot On and Hot Off, and we also covered the Banjo project, so we basically ran our buses uh, to, to the local council, so they will pay us a rental fee, so all the costs is on us and so forth. So, um, and then we, we might also convert uh, more our express buses to, to this kind of projects, because this kind of project we will have a uh, a secure rental from the government and also subsidies and so forth. So we might convert more express bus to, to, to cater for this kind of projects like, so that we no need to purchase buses in future. Okay, so regarding the cross station, so petrol station we know that basically the is quite stagnant. Like, so the margin of it, although the revenue might uh, look very high, but um, it is actually quite stagnant. Like, so the, the, the margin of it is only around like 1%. So for petrol stations, we are not going to expand on it anymore. So far, it's uh, enough uh, to supply for our buses and also to public. So that one will be status quo. Okay. So our focus will still be on the terminal operations. So regarding the mining, this is actually not a real diversification of our business. Law. So because we are only helping to do uh, marketing in terms of mining, so because, uh, but the contributions it will not be significant uh, compared to terminal operations. So our focus will still back to the terminal operations. Mm, okay. The next question is asking about operation co uh, costs. Uh, like, uh, uh, can you provide any insights into the operation cost given that the inflation is expected to increase in 2021? Okay, so um, in terms of operation costs, maybe uh, I should cover the terminal operations. 
So um, just now I share that uh, our gross profit market is around 80%. Why is it so? Because majority of the cost already capitalized lah, when we construct the building or when we, if we do uh, upgrading, renovation already capitalized. So our operating cost will only consist like a, a, a minor maintenance, main power, utilities, uh, and depositions and so forth, finance costs, all those lah. So that's that's why um, our our uh, gross profit margin is so high. And then um, the rental also in uh, the rental of advertising and promotions. So it's because it's all on the pillars, walls, and so forth. If we didn't rent out the spaces for advertising, so it will be just wasted lah. So if we want to advertise that, uh, we are not going to incur a very a significant cost also. So it's it's very minimal cost that we are. We, we have to incur lah. So, so that's why our margin uh, can be so high like, in terms of the terminal operation. Mm. The next question is asked by Ting Lip Ong uh, that uh, he noticed that the uh, cash flow reduced a lot if compared with uh, the year financial year 2019. So is there any reason for that? Okay, um, like I mentioned uh, just now, so some of the cash that we receive from the conversions of <clears throat> Warren have already used to repay the uh, partial repayments of the school. And partially of the, some of the cash flows we have used, like uh, before we obtain the CCC, is used for construction purposes and also uh, renovation, the internal renovations uh, for like uh, the basic renovation for tenants and so forth. So mainly it's for the capex, like capex purposes. Okay, uh, that's this next question asked by uh, Michael Lowe, uh, which is, you know, uh, uh, any plans to expand regionally around Southeast Asia or in ASEAN? So I would like to uh, maybe ask Dato to answer this question. Uh, the question is, you know, uh, uh, I don't know if Transit has no plan to expand the business of the company to the Southeast Asia. 因为我们目前呢只是集中在马来西亚啊因为本马来西亚现在有百多个巴士总站我们集中在地地地中立在马来西亚我们也有想过会在沙巴沙罗伊那边啊会将来啦如果有机会如果有好的机会好的全部我们
us by Kang Long Mok, which is uh, to say that uh, it's interesting to see that the four petrol stations contributed almost 20% of the income, 5% each approximately. So is there any plan to invest in more petrol station as 20 of them will be equivalent to the revenue contribution from the terminal operation business? Uh, no, no, because uh, like I mentioned earlier, um, revenues, in terms of revenue, it might look tight, but in terms of earnings, it's very minimal. So the margin of it is only 1%. So compared to the uh, terminal operations, the margin is 80%. So it's not comparable in that sense. So uh, not going to expand on the petrol station anymore. So the focus is still in DOO and uh, TMC. La. Yes, correct. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the next question is asked by Eddie Lear. Are there any possible revenue synergy and growth factor with electrical bus future trend? Mm, I think there is possibility for electric uh, bus in future, but for time being, no, because um, electric bus is um, still very costly compared to the uh, diesel bus. And then, um, like I mentioned, uh, if we have... Uh, if you have more projects, uh, we will we will rather convert our express bus to, to cater for the projects instead of purchase of more buses lah. So that we can focus more in terminal operations. Mm. Okay. There are also a few questions that I noticed asking about share consolidation. Uh, like why did the company undertake the share consolidation? Okay. So uh, there is a few reasons why we undertake the share consolidations. Uh, this is actually happened after the uh, conversions of warrants. So um, firstly, our before conversions, our share cap is actually one point four billion. Okay, but after conversion of warrants, it increased to one point nine billion shares. Okay, so with that um, huge uh, big size of the share base. So we like to consolidate three to one so that it reduced down to 634 million shares so that it's easier for us to manage the share base and also to uh, increase the uh, trading price. Lah. So in that sense, it's doubled by uh, three times. And then um, so, so, so that is basically the reason due to the warrant conversion. Mm. Okay. Uh... The next question is asked by Fang Yi Tan. Uh, do you have any plan to expand into Lumut area considering that Pangkor is also seeing higher footfall nowadays? Yes, yes, there is a possibility. La. So, um, not, not to disclose in detail yet. So, um, that is plan. La. That is plan. <laughs> okay, that there are plans. La, huh? yeah. uh, when time is matured, we'll let you know. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Um, Okay, so just now we also talk about, you know, uh, futures prospect and so on. Uh, th this question asked by Jackson, uh, Jason, uh, if I pronounce your name correctly, is, uh, you know, what are the risks to the para transit? Risks? Yeah, risks to the mm. company's business. Okay, previously, there is uh, two risks la, which I can share. Okay, one is... Uh, how, how are you going to uh, convince the existing express bus operator to move from the existing terminal to your new terminal? So, but then with our um, expertise, because we are also one of the uh, bus operators, so, so we, we, we are able to handle that. And also we, are, we obtain a support before constructions. So we will also communicate with the local council to issue them a letter to... To, to ask them to move over. La. So, so that is basically one. Okay. Um, the second one is how are you going to um, convince the express bus operator to move from an individual ticketing booth to a centralized ticketing system? So this again, uh, the advantages is we are also the bus operator. So we will initiate that. Okay, and also share with them what is the benefit of centralized ticketing system so that the express bus operator can also save costs through this uh, initiative, lah, which means that they do not need to rent a ticketing booth from us and then uh, doesn't need a, a main power to, to sell tickets at the counter itself, do not need to pay at utilities and so forth. 
So um, everything will be managed by the uh, by us, the system member. Okay, managed by the system member itself. Now, of course, we will charge uh, a certain uh, commissions uh, based on per ticket sales and per bus entrance, but it's still cheaper than um, they're operating themselves. Mm, okay. I also see a very interesting questions on my uh on the Q and A, uh, and maybe maybe I direct these questions to uh Dato Chong uh, huh? So the question asked in English is uh as the company expand to several states right now, like you know in uh Kuantan and also in uh, Kedah, right? So do you have plans to change the name of the company, <laughs> like no longer Parat Transit? Now because if you co consider using technology in the company name as involved in a technology ticket selling platform, uh, market will definitely give a different valuation on the tech stock. La. So let, let me translate this uh, question. Uh就是说,啊,大多就是说,就好像你们的公司 <笑>但是呢我们本来有打算要改一个名案但是呢因为我们培养团队现在已经很<笑> 因为他目前前马来西亚来讲因为我们目前来讲 Okay, so uh, as Dato said that, um, you know, uh, at the, at the, of course, Para Transit right now is very reputable and the branding is very strong and everybody knows that Para Transit is in the management of uh, bus terminal and also the provision of uh, 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 public bus transportation service. So there's definitely no plan to change the uh, to, to, to change the name from para transit to other you know, fancy technology name uh, because that uh, because of to, to harvest the strong the benefit of strong brand name in the operating industry. So that's the answer from Dato Chong. Yeah, thank you. All right. Um okay, let me see. Uh. there are still like 60 over questions on my screen, <laughs> even though we have answered like 40 of them. Okay. Um yeah, let me look at the next question. Okay, this is asked by Lim Neng. Uh, with the expansionary plan right now, uh, will the debt increase again? Mm, the debt, because our debt level currently, uh, net giving level is uh, it, uh, it's only around 43%. So it very much depends on what kind of expansions law. So, for example, uh, terminal management services, most likely we are going to use our internally generated funds. But for the uh, develop, own, and operate the Pido Central, we might need to utilize some of the funds from the conversions of foreigns, internally generated funds, and also uh, some mixtures of the super funds. Lah. So, but the gearing, uh, the net gearing will not uh, grow very high lah, com compared to uh, 2020. Mm, okay. Um, the next question is asked by Hui Wong Hui Meng. Uh, will the upcoming shopping malls around Para affect your IPTT revenue? Okay. Um, like, like I mentioned earlier, we, we are different from a mall because uh, a mall uh, now you have a direct competitors which is uh, online shopping. But for us, uh, we actually have a captive market. Because um, passengers, of course, they can purchase the ticket, a uh, bus ticket online, or self service queues, or ticketing counters. But the passengers need to be physically present in our terminal to ride a bus. So that's why there is a captive footfall that so that our advertising and promotional can sell in our terminal. 
Mm. Okay. Do you think your DOO success in para can be replicated in other states given your advantage in para? Uh, you know, operation try called in para. That's asked by Faisal Hashim. I think it's a possibility that we can um, expand our DOO to other states. But for the time, because for DOO, we cannot build um, and own a lot of terminals. La. So I think the max that we can we can own is like is, uh, five, uh, five, five terminals. So because the capex that is involved is very high. So that's why um, currently we already own two terminals. So the next one is Middle Central. It's also located in Para. But um, we will see where, where is the more lo uh, strategic locations of, of that, that site. La. So if there is, more, uh, there is a better opportunity in other areas, so we might uh, consider. So that is a possibility. Yes, if there's a possibility. La. Yeah. Okay, now in the financial forecast, uh, do, do you foresee the effect of the post-vaccination? to impact your company bottom line favorably? This is asked by mm -hmm. Albert. Yes, uh, like I mentioned, because post-vaccination is um, help to uh, open up uh, the borders la, and also the, the public, the passengers, tourists are able, to, uh, are able to cross borders and the economy is also recovering. So, so it's actually um, better for us in, in terms of, of the footfall. La especially the footfall because um, in, in terminal operations, is the, the important factors is actually the footfall. So once the footfall increase, we can negotiate for a higher rental rate with the media agency. Mm, okay. I, I also see a very interesting question uh, that I also would like to pose it to uh, Dato Chiong. Uh. <laughs> okay. The question is, um, have has uh, Para Transit considered putting or converting uh, your uh, operate the terminal operation into uh, a real estate investment trust. Uh, just uh, translated, which is uh, just um, uh, para transit. You may uh, calculate Jiang, Niman, the terminal operation, the business, Ben Chen, Ega, uh, Fang Di Chan Tuo. May you like me, woman, uh, when I want me to focus on the terminal, you know, when the terminal, we tie to you, when it's out in my woman, the bus, we tie to. 人员进来嘛，所以我们是偏focus的，你那边嘞，偏focus那个real estate啊，啊，focus，发射怎么样啊？integrated的，你那。Okay, okay, 好的。Okay, so uh, Dato's answer is that uh, uh, they have not considered converting the terminal into a real estate investment trust. So that's his his answer lah. So um, I think right now we are coming to the end of the Q and A. I, I guess that today for all the three hundred over participants on the line right now, we have a really engaging question and answer session with the management of uh, Para Transit. So if you like, you know, if you like this uh, management interview series brought to you by Kenanga Investment Bank, uh, please type yes in the chat box so we know that if you like it then next time we will uh, interview or invite more management of uh, listed companies to come and join our Kananga webinars all right okay thank you so much so <laughs> yeah so before before we uh before we end the session uh you know uh, does uh, Dato Chong or Jennifer have any uh, message to, to want to share with all our attendants uh, attendees today Okay, just some uh, last words. So, uh, Parrot Transit Braha is not just a bus company. No doubt we are a bus operator, but that is just a platform for us to tap into the terminal operations. So, our focus is on the terminal operations. So, in future, uh, our growth will be through the two engines. One is the DOO, another one is the terminal management services. So, so that is our focus. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, okay, great. Now, if you like this session, all right, so that you have anything to add on, right? Oh, thank you. Okay. 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 Okay.
please type P Trans if you learn a great deal about their company. Wow. All right. Thank you so much. So before you leave, so let me share with you what, uh, what has uh, Kenanga prepared for you. For the next webinar, Kenanga has already invited a very renowned speaker uh, who is uh, Mr. Ui Kohua to share with you the Malaysia Market Outlook 2021. So that is uh, happening on the 18th of March, which is uh, Thursday from um, uh, not, not 8 p.m. Uh, it's 8.30, okay? There's a typo here, okay? From 8.30 to uh, 10. Just give me a minute, huh? From 8.30 to 10 p.m. So the registration link have just given to you in the chat group. So if you have not later, I will post it again uh, in the chat group, okay? Uh, please, uh, if you want to learn about what we Kohua thinks about the Malaysia market outlook in 2021, please uh, tune in to our next uh, webinar brought to you by Kenanga Investment Bank. So with that, uh, uh, one more thing, which is if you have not had a Kenanga trading account, please hurry up and fill up this online form. Uh, just head over to www cantrade.com.my forward slash open dash account dash form. So to fill up your interest to open an account with Kenanga, uh, personally, I also use a Kenanga trading account. So if you have not had a Kenanga trading account, please head over to this www.cantrade.com.my forward slash open dash account dash form. Uh, when you fill up this form, uh, Kenanga Investment Bank will arrange a friendly uh, dealer representative to uh, attend to your account opening request. So with that, I want to thank everybody for tuning in online and also want to thank our uh, wonderful panelists who, who are Dato Cheong, the Executive Director of Perat Transit Berhad, and also Jennifer Chin, who is a, uh, a Chief Financial Officer of Perat Transit Berhad for sharing the company's background and sharing your business performance as well as the future's uh, prospect for Perat Transit. So uh, thank you everybody for tuning in to today's webinar and may you have the pleasant rest of the day. Bye-bye. Thank All you. Right. Thank you. Uh, thanks, everybody.